Am I audible and visible? Let me know. Am I audible and visible? Am I audible and visible? Let me know. My audible, visible, let me know. Hello everyone, welcome to On Academy Future Doctors. My audible. I myself, Dr. Deepthi Karya, I am MD, PhD Physiology. I am a social professor and educating MBBS, nursing and physiotherapy students. I have more than 17 years of teaching experience. Let me explain our uh, about our subscription we have two varieties of subscription one that is plus subscription and second one that is iconic subscription in plus subscription you can choose the best from the best here you can access both live as well as recorded classes you can study on the device of your choice you can learn from india's top educators for your medical exams you can access question bank which is having more than 25000 questions you can compete in the live test as well as quizzes and within 12 months we are coming with a printed note. Next is iconic subscription. In iconic subscription here, your access to the best from two of the best. Which are these two? One that is Unacademy and Prep Ladder with Unacademy in which issue, hello, welcome, uh, my regular student. You just, uh, Come with other students also. I'll be very much happy. Hmm? Ask your other friends to join. They also will learn. Now, so in our, within two minutes, I'll just uh, explain about our subscription. So you have well-structured live batches, recorded classes, which covers full syllabus. You can have question bank, which is having more than 25,000 questions. You can have competitive light test as well as quizzes. Hmm. Comprehensive printed and digital note. And second one that is on academy in prep ladder with prep ladder. You can have clinical and integrated essential video lectures from our dream team, question bank three with active guidance, system tags, and more rapid revision and snapshots and treasures in 2021. So both of them they have unique features. Special class features they are you can have interactive live classes you can attend live classes as well as participate in live chat and get your doubts cleared you can have a facility of raise a hand you can talk to your educators in the live class and you can poll for the learners you can never miss a class as you are always notified for the class you can get lecture notes also you can download pdf notes as well as get access to the recorded and you can access all this anywhere and anytime. Next one that is, we have updated and highly effective question bank, which is having more than 25,000 high yield clinical questions, which are based on latest exam pattern. And along with that, we are also including detailed explanation. These are our NEET PG September 2021 toppers. And this is our on academy medical PG test December 2021 pre test ritual. Sorry, this are you can see here we have different free test educator curated test series, FMGE grant test series, study with me, YouTube test series, as well as need PG 2022 subject wise test series and need PG 2020 grant test series for plus batch subscription. Okay. As well as we have focused FMGE 2022 comprehensive batch, which has been started from 15th December and uh, that is for six months. Whereas target need PG 2022 test and discussion batch that also has been started from 15th December and that is for three. So you can subscribe from your mobile either plus or iconic subscription. You can use my code Dipti10 and you can get 10%.
longer the duration of subscription cheaper are the rates now let us come to the topic one important announcement before that and that is all these videos live videos as well as special classes which we are putting on the platform of on academy future doctors this all are free to access okay so all students they please get maximum benefits of all this okay? now starting with our today's topic hypoxia one of the very important topic for exams so now what is hypoxia hypoxia means deficiency of oxygen supply at the tissue level when any of our tissue is not got getting oxygen that is known as hypoxia okay now according to causes hypoxia is divided in four types so which are these causes number one that is the causes decrease oxygen tension in the arterial blood in arterial blood when oxygen tension decreases Second thing, decrease oxygen carrying capacity. When oxygen is not carried out properly by the hemoglobin of the blood. Third, decrease in the rate of blood flow. When rate of blood flow is less to the tissue. The rate of blood flow. And third and fourth one that is decrease utilization of oxygen by tissues oxygen is not so these are four causes and accordingly four types are there first one that is hypoxic hypoxia what is the cause for hypoxic hypoxia decrease oxygen tension that was first we discussed okay second anemic hypoxia decrease oxygen carrying capacity oxygen carrying capacity third stagnant hypoxia Stagnation, blood flow is decreased. Okay. And fourth one, histotoxic hypoxia. Here, utilization of oxygen by tissue that is decreased. So, there are four types of hypoxia. Hypoxic, anemic, stagnant and histotoxic. We will discuss one by one. Now, starting with first one, hypoxic hypoxia. Now, which are the causes of hypoxic hypoxia? As I told you, hypoxic is decrease oxygen tension in the arterial blood okay because of that decrease oxygen supply to the tissue so for that first cause that is lower oxygen tension in the inspired air whatever air we are inspiring it is having less oxygen less oxygen is available here outside oxygen is less commonest cause for this is high altitude because at high altitude Total pressure is reduced. So, all gases partial pressure is also reduced. Okay. So, high altitude. That is first cause. Second thing, that is if you are breathing from artificial gas mixture, which is having less oxygen. Okay. Oxygen is less in your inspired air. Okay. Third thing, if you are breathing from closed space, which is also having less oxygen. So, that also causes low oxygen. Main thing here is oxygen tension in your arterial blood is reduced and this oxygen tension is reduced because of low oxygen tension in the inspired air okay so this is first cause of this hypoxic hypoxia second one that is hypoventilation ventilation is reduced suppose the person is having obstruction person is having asthma person cannot inspire properly cannot take air oxygenated air inside so that results in hypoventilation obstruction due to asthma and decrease partial pressure of oxygen in arterial blood okay that is one second thing that is if there is pneumothorax here you can see pneumothorax that is air in the in pleura okay pneumo that is air in the thoracic tube so what happens here because of this air there is decreased lung compliance. Compliance means distensibility. Lungs cannot be distensible. So, not air, required air can enter. Then, third cause, that is paralysis of respiratory muscles. Suppose because of poliomyelitis or any other cause, when respiratory muscles, main muscle for respiration, inspiration, that is diaphragm. So, diaphragm and internal, external intercostal, when they paralyzed, that results in hypoventilation. 
other cause for hypoventilation is damage to the respiratory centers respiratory centers we have discussed in our previous video that medullary and pontine centers are there they regulate respiration so if these centers are damaged you can see here there is apnea stoppage of respiration so that also produces hypoxic hypoxia okay so first cause for hypoxic hypoxia means is low oxygen tension in the inspired air second one that is hypoventilation third that is ventilation is proper but diffusion is affected now here you can see reduced diffusion oxygen there inside the alveoli but cannot enter inside the blood okay so you can see here as you all know this is alveolus this is blood vessel in between there is respiratory membrane so this diffusion through alveoli to the blood vessel is affected okay examples are one that is in emphysema in emphysema what happens you can see here these are normal alveoli and in emphysema this normal alveoli they are damaged and that results in decrease in the surface area less the surface area less is the diffusion then another is in case of pulmonary edema what happens there is collect edema means collection of interstitial fluid here the fluid is collected so this diffusion is affected other causes are physiological shunt formation physiological shunt that is because of mismatched ventilation and perfusion and anatomical shunt that occurs in congenital heart disease okay now what are the effects so these are all the causes okay let us enumerate all the causes first cause that is we have discussed low oxygen tension in the inspired air inspired air is not containing second hypoventilation person is not ventilating properly third thing that is diffusion is affected either because of emphysema or because of pulmonary edema there is physiological shunt and anatomical shunt okay so these are the causes now next is which are the effects what happens when there is hypoxic hypoxia as i told you oxygen tension in the arterial blood is reduced okay but oxygen carrying capacity is normal what is the difference between this oxygen tension and carrying capacity oxygen tension is your partial pressure of oxygen normal partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood is 95 millimeter of mercury here it is reduced oxygen carrying capacity means we have discussed 1 gram of hemoglobin contains 1.34 ml oxygen so if our hemoglobin is normal 15 gram then our oxygen carrying capacity will be normal 20 ml per 100 ml of so oxygen is carried out but percentage saturation is reduced because of decrease in the po2 as please go that oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve you can see here there was po2 and here there is percentage saturation okay so as po2 is reduced percentage saturation is normal but secondary to that this percentage saturation also decreases oxygen carrying capacity is normal here rate of blood flow is also normal no, blood is flowing normally oxygen is normally utilized by the tissue our tissue has having no problem so this all other parameters are normal so which are the characteristic features of this is very important in all four types of hypoxia you are getting confused with all this characteristic features okay now which are those number 1 that is arterial po2 as i told you normal arterial po2 that is 95 mm of mercury here it is reduced suppose it becomes 80 mm okay now percentage saturation of hemoglobin that is also reduced because as i told you according to this curve po2 and percentage saturation po2 decreases percentage so decreases okay so that is also reduced okay and arterial venous po2 difference what is it arterial po2 normal is 95 here it is reduced becoming 80 venous po2 normal that is 40 mm here it will not changed because we have no concern here with the venous po2 so what happens to this difference normally this difference is 95 minus 40 is equal to 55 mm okay here it becomes 40 mm of mercury so students are getting confused with this why this is low and this is high 
okay can you getting are you getting me this way it is low okay. oxygen carrying capacity is normal 20 ml per 100 ml of blood blood flow to the tissue normal oxygen utilization is also no okay. next is anemic hypoxia now what happens here there is anemia e learner welcome you are most welcome for your thanks for your appreciation now next is anemic hypoxia what is this anemic hypoxia anemia what happens here in anemia oxygen carrying capacity of the blood decreases okay what are the causes for anemic hypoxia number one that is rbc count is reduced either a bone marrow is not producing proper rbc or because of hemorrhage or because of any other reason there is anemia okay so that is one cause second cause that is decreased hemoglobin content in the blood rbcs are normal suppose rbcs are your normal rbc count is 5.2 million plus or minus 0.3 million per cubic millimeter but in that rbc hemoglobin is reduced okay, that is other cause third hemoglobin is normal but it is altered like Math hemoglobin. What is math hemoglobin? In that, Fe plus 2 is converted into Fe plus 3. And this Fe plus 3 cannot bind with oxygen. That is the pathology here. Then, carboxy hemoglobin. What happens in carboxy hemoglobin? Here, hemoglobin binds with carbon monoxide. Carboxy. So, it cannot bind with oxygen. So, these are all the causes for anemic hypoxia. Okay, now what happens here in anemic hypoxia? Characteristic features are as arterial PO2 is normal because it has no effect. Uh, we are getting oxygen from atmosphere normally and it enters in our blood also. So partial pressure of oxygen is normal. Second thing, oxygen carrying capacity of blood. It is reduced because hemoglobin is less or RBC. Okay? Then Third, percentage saturation of hemoglobin that is also reduced because for percentage saturation we require oxygen to be carried out by hemoglobin. And arteriovenous PO2 difference that is normal. Why? Because arterial PO2 is 95 millimeter of mercury, venous one is 40 mmHg. The difference would be 55 millimeter of mercury that is normal. Then Stagnant hypoxia. Here, stagnant, the name itself suggests there is stagnation. Blood flow is reduced. And as blood flow is reduced, oxygen is not delivered adequately to the tissue. Okay? So, our tissues are not getting oxygen properly, and causes are two types of stagnation. One that is generalized stagnant hypoxia, and second one is localized stagnant hypoxia. Generalized means in all over our body. Uh, blood is not flowing generalized so what are the causes for generalized hypoxia one that is shock what is shock how can you define shock means decrease tissue perfusion because of circulatory failure or hemorrhage here what happens because of shock our baroreceptors are stimulated okay? and baroreceptors they cause vasoconstriction and as there is vasoconstriction there is decreased blood flow to the tissue. Baroreceptors, what they do is, they try to increase blood pressure. And for that, what they do is vasoconstriction. But what is the side effect of this is, our blood flow to the tissue is further reduced. So that is the generalized stagnant hypoxia. Other cause for generalized stagnant hypoxia, that is congestive heart failure. If our heart is failed, heart is not able to pump proper blood. Okay. So, as decrease blood pumping and venous return is also decreased and as blood flow is reduced, tissues are not getting proper oxygen and that results in hypoxia. Okay. So, these are causes for generalized hypoxia. Number one is shock. Shock is maybe because of heart failure or circulatory failure. Okay. And second, that is your congestive heart failure. Okay. Localized stagnant hypoxia. Here what happens, there is atherosclerosis. The blood vessel is having, it is sclerosed. It has a plaque 
so blood flow is reduced or there is thrombus formation thrombus that is intravascular clot inside the blood vessel there is clot and when this thrombus detaches it produces emboli that is emboli so these are the causes for localized stagnant hypoxia this stagnation itself know that blood is not flowing properly okay so this is third type of hypoxia let us revise we have three we have discussed two first one that is hypoxic hypoxia second one that is anemic hypoxia and third one that is stagnant hypoxia now what happens to this parameters in stagnant hypoxia arteriolar po2 partial pressure of oxygen is normal they are getting arteriolar po2 is affected by entry of air and oxygen from atmosphere so here arterial po2 is normal 90 millimeter of mercury okay arterial oxygen content that is also normal okay oxygen content that is depending on oxygen present in our blood okay and arterial percentage of oxygen saturation means percentage saturation hemoglobin saturation that is also here very important thing arteriovenous po2 difference what happens to this you can see suppose this is your tissue this is your artery this is your vein okay now artery there is stagnation blood is not flowing to the tissue so what happens tissue uses whatever oxygen it is heavy so what happens venous blood is having decreased po2 suppose you can see arterial po2 is normal 95 mm of mercury but venous po2 instead of 40 mmhg it becomes 20 mmhg because all the oxygen is used because tissue tissues are not getting new oxygen so what happens to arterial venous po2 difference that becomes 75 you can see here it is increased this way it is increased okay so this is the fundament of for increase in this arterial venous po2 difference okay last type of hypoxia that is histotoxic hypoxia here oxygen availability is normal oxygen flow is normal here what happens tissue ability is reduced now tissues are not utilizing oxygen you can see here tissue enzymes are affected so they are not utilizing properly oxygen. this is not true hypoxia because oxygen supplied is is normal to the tissue so here causes are cyanide poisoning cyanide when we give it affects our enzyme cytochrome oxidase and that affects your uh, mitochondrial enzymes that affects the utilization of oxygen okay. another that is sulfide poisoning when hydrogen sulfide poisoning is there then also it affects the tissue uh, cytochrome oxidase system and affects the utilization now here what happens to all these parameters arteriolar po2 is normal arterial percentage of oxygen saturation that is also normal but here very important thing is arteriovenous po2 difference what happens to here you can see suppose your arteriolar po2 is 95 millimeter of mercury as i told you this is our tissue now tissue is not using any oxygen so what happens venous po2 also remains same 95 millimeter of mercury so what happens to this difference this is nil so or reduced depending on the type of it maybe 95 minus 80 so this reduced. normally this should be 95 minus 40 normally okay so this is the explanation now the symptoms of hypoxia the symptoms are different in different individuals it depends on rapidity of development of hypoxia how rapid it develops how severe it is and how a body tries to effectively compensate it there are three types one is fulminant hypoxia second is acute and third is chronic hypoxia now what is fulminant hypoxia here hypoxia develop is very severe and it develops very fast and how it develops when somebody is exposed to very high altitude like 20000 feet without oxygen that is in aerostat or aircraft or somewhere okay and symptoms are the person is unconscious within 15 to 20 seconds and the if we are not treating the person the person will die within four to five minutes with this fulminant severe hypoxia second is acute hypoxia here what happens when the person is exposed 
arteriolar oxygen tension of 25 to 40 mmHg for immediately and the effects are similar to alcoholism and the effects are the person is having lack of coordination, slow reflexes, speech is slurred, overconfidence, un unconsciousness and if we not treat it, the person will die. Third is chronic hypoxia. Here the person is exposed to low partial pressure of oxygen between 40 to 60 millimeter of mercury for a long period of time. Here the person is having fatigue, dyspnea, breathlessness and respiratory arrhythmia. Now, signs of hypoxia here, one of the very important signs is cyanosis. Cyanosis means bluish discoloration of what is the uh, meaning of fulminant? Fulminant means severe hypoxia and it develops very fast. Acute is fast and, and fulminant is severe plus fast issue. Cyanosis. Cyanosis means you can see here blue discoloration of skin and mucous membrane. And when this happens, when your reduced hemoglobin that is more than 5, sorry, 5 gram per deciliter of blood. Okay. And it is of two types. It is of two types, peripheral and central. Peripheral means bluish discoloration. You can see this is having both. Peripheral you can see here peripherally the fingers and central that is on the lips peripheral hypoxia or peripheral cyanosis is because of there is stagnation of blood flow blood is not flowing and central that is because of hypoxic and other types now other sign of hypoxia that is the person is having tachycardia tachycardia means increase in the heart rate that is why because peripheral chemoreceptors are stimulated uh, because of decreased oxygen Oxygen is reduced, peripheral chemoreceptors are stimulated and they increase heart rate. Then tachypnea means here respiratory rate is increased. This is tachypnea, you can see. Tachypnea increase in the respiratory. That is also because oxygen is less, respiratory centers are stimulated. And this both are present more in the hypoxic hypoxia okay, when arteriolar PO2 is reduced. Because peripheral chemoreceptors are stimulated by arteriolar PO2. Very important thing, this may be asked as a short question also, accommodation and acclimatization. Or if you have a question of hypoxia, you can write down this thing along with it. Physiological compensatory mechanisms to chronic hypoxia. If somebody is exposed to low oxygen tension for a long period of time, then what happens? Which changes occur? So one that is accommodation, second is acclimatization. What is accommodation? Accommodation means immediate changes occur in the person immediate reflex changes immediately when the person is exposed to low oxygen tension what happens so one is hyperventilation that is rate and depth of respiration increases that is one second thing the person is having tachycardia as i told you because respiratory centers are stimulated and along with respiratory center we have cardiovascular centers and therefore increase in the heart rate also tachycardia third thing 2 3 diphosphoglycerate is increased that causes shift of the curve to right side and shift of the curve that causes release of oxygen because we have lack of oxygen so this is the third accommodation change now very important is acclimatization now which are these acclimatization change we will discuss one by one this is the list of them i am trying to finish the topic as we have lack of time starting with first one that is RBC count increase. How RBC count increases because of hypoxia. You can see here, oxygen is reduced. What happens? There is release of erythropoietin from kidney. And this erythropoietin stimulates RBC production. Because of that, RBC count increases. Okay? And here what happens? Hemoglobin also increases because increase in the RBC. So from normal hemoglobin concentration, 15 gram, it becomes 20 gram percent. And RBC count is also increased. Pulmonary ventilation increases by five times. Okay. And that is also because of stimulation of respiratory centers. Cardiovascular changes, there is increase in the, you can see heart rate increases, force of contraction of heart increases, and cardiac output also increases. This is all because of stimulation of cardiovascular centers. Pulmonary hypertension. What happens here? 
because there is hypoxia and as i told you if you refer my previous video i told you hypoxic vasoconstriction in lungs so what happens when there is vasoconstriction blood pressure increases to pulmonary hypertension then total lung capacity is increased and diffusion capacity total lung capacity means amount of air in the lung that is increased because of expansion of thoracic cage chest cavity increase so large amount of air can enter for gas sections as oxygen is less so if air is more than gas action be better and diffusion capacity across the respiratory membrane is also increased. cellular acclimatization is also there in cell and tissue which are the changes that is after long stay at high altitude what happens in our mitochondria oxidative enzymes are increased that is one change sorry second change that is increase in the number of mitochondria in the tissue mitochondria increases in the tissue that is second change and third capillary density to the skeletal muscle these are skeletal muscles they have more capillary this skeletal muscle. so more blood flow that is for more oxygen supply then other change that is respiratory drive is decreased respiratory drive means our centers respiratory centers they stimulate the receptors for respiration this is reduced if long-term exposure to hypoxia because uh, if respiratory drive is increased we have increased work of breathing so to reduce work of breathing this respiratory drive is required to be decreased okay now last part that is treatment part physiological basis of oxygen therapy oxygen therapy is given as a treatment here also in covid you must have seen that uh, people are hypoxic this was known as happy hypoxia so oxygen is required okay now here oxygen has great value in some types of hypoxia but not in other types okay? now, so this we are giving oxygen in two forms number one that is inhalation of 100 percent pure oxygen or 100 percent pure oxygen at high barometric pressure what is it first is at 100 percent pure oxygen at atmospheric pressure so here it is useful in case of hypoxic hypoxia hypoxic hypoxia when we have low oxygen in atmosphere like you are ascending at high altitude so you have low oxygen so that requires 100 percent oxygen at atmosphere okay then it is also useful in case of hypoventilation suppose person is having bronchial asthma or the person is having poliomyelitis or other causes that results in hypoventilation or decrease in all cases it is important but it is not useful if there is anemic hypoxia or stagnant hypoxia and in all these cases we require hyperbaric oxygen hyperbaric means with pressure we are giving oxygen okay? so now what is hyperbaric oxygen therapy here we are giving oxygen with pressure so normal oxygen is given at one atmosphere okay suppose if we are giving it as a hyperbaric therapy means we are giving at two atmospheric pressure what happens normally as we have discussed we have three percent oxygen in dissolved form means 0.3 ml of oxygen is dissolved per 100 ml per 100 millimeter of mercury so here when we are giving it at two atmospheric pressure so this becomes here it is at one atmosphere so two atmospheric pressure this point zero zero three multiplied by six seventy three by six seventy three i'll explain seven sixty is one atmospheric pressure okay minus forty seven mmg that is your water vapor pressure and forty mmg for carbon dioxide so all this you are subtracting you will get seven and how this 0 0.003 because 0 0.3 per 100 mmg if we are talking about per mmg then it would be 0 0.003 ml per 100 ml and we are multiplying this with 673 so when we are giving oxygen at one atmospheric pressure then we are giving this and a dissolved form 0 0.3 ml but when we are giving the oxygen at two atmospheric pressure we provide 2 ml of oxygen 
in dissolved form so we can increase dissolved oxygen okay hyperbaric therapy oxygen therapy is required when normal hemoglobin is not available to carry oxygen like in case of carbon monoxide poisoning anemic hypoxia decompression sickness the person is having wounds with poor blood supply and stagnant hypoxia but here we have to be cautious that we should not use then two to three atmospheric pressure otherwise it produces oxygen toxicity what happens here in oxygen to toxicity person is having uh, sign symptoms that is because of uh, formation of free radicals from oxygen and they are irritation of airways in the form of nasal congestion sore throat substernal discomfort sneezing coughing okay bronchopneumonia the person is having any newborn infants the the infant is having retinopathy because of free radicals and bronchopneumonia okay and as well as nervous system complications are muscle twitching tinnitus convulsions coma and death okay so these are the complications but because of oxygen toxicity these are the short notes most commonly asked from today's topic that is hypoxia hypoxic hypoxia classification of hypoxia you can see here these are important one i have taken this from previous year university papers only types of hypoxia role of oxygen therapy and synapse so this is all about today's class thank you if you like my video you can like share with your friends and you can subscribe our channel on academy future doctors issue thank you ma'am you are so cute Thank you.